This video will document the process of installing ICE 2.4 on VMware vCenter Server 6.5 from an OVA package downloaded from Cisco Software Center. You will need to have the OVA file downloaded to your PC to follow along with this video. You can see from the note in the installation guide that there is a compatibility issue between the posted 2.4 OVA and vCenter 6.5. You have to download and install the OVF tool from VMware to continue. I have the links to the installation guide, the OVF tool, In the command prompt, navigate to the OVF tool installation directory. This is a CLI based tool, so we will deploy the OVA to vCenter server from here. I've put the command that is needed in Notepad. The first command will call the OVF tool itself. Then we identify the data store to which the VM will be installed, followed by the local path to the OVA file, and finally, the address for vCenter server and the host to which we are installing. Copy and paste this into the command prompt. I won't hit enter yet, so I can bring up vCenter server so you can watch along as the VM is provisioned. Back on the command prompt, press the enter key to run the command. Enter the username and password used to log into vCenter server. Once the command begins to run, you will see the VM appear in vCenter. I sped up this process so you can follow along with the process. When finished, exit the command prompt. Right click on the VM that you've just created and click Open Console. Press the play button to power on the VM. At the first login prompt, type setup to begin the script. Enter the details requested to configure ICE. Start with the host name and then enter the IP address, subnet mask, default gateway. default DNS domain put in the IP address of the primary DNS server if you have a secondary DNS server you can add that now we're going to skip it enter the IP address of the NTP server Again, if you have a secondary NTP server, you can enter that here. Enter the time zone. Press Y to enable SSH. Enter the username you want to use. Pressing enter will accept admin as the default. Put in the password that you've decided to use for ICE and then confirm the password. This process is going to result in an error and I'll explain why. As you can see, we cannot ping the gateway. This is due to the fact that I did not configure the VM settings prior to starting the VM. Let's do that now. Go into vCenter, right click the VM, and choose Edit Settings. When this screen comes up, set the network adapters to the right network settings. When you're done with that, let's take a look at our resource reservations. If you expand the CPU section, you'll see that 4000 megahertz is set aside as a reservation for the CPU. Expanding the section for memory shows that 16 gigabytes of RAM is allocated and reserved for this virtual machine. Click OK to save these changes. Go back to the virtual machine console. Enter Y to continue and then confirm the network settings. Again, I've sped up this process so that you'd be able to follow along and recognize the screens as they come onto your installation.
Once ICE is configured and reboots, log in with the user that you created in the last step. Once logged in, run the command show application status ICE. This will show the processes used by ICE. We need to pay particular attention to application server. As you can see, the status here is not running. Run the command again, this time using the abbreviated versions of the commands. I usually stick to about three letters per command. You can see here that the application server is still not running. Press the up arrow to cycle through commands, and press enter to run that command. As you can see, the application server is now moved into the initializing state. Run the command again. Now you can see that the application server is in the running state. Now we can close the console. At this time, if you'd like, you can rename your virtual machine by right-clicking on the name of the machine and going to Rename. Enter in the name that matches your naming conventions. Once you click OK, it saves that name change and it's reflected in vCenter. Now point your browser to the IP address that you have set for ICE. You'll get a certificate error since we're using self-signed certificates. Go ahead and accept that error so that you get the login screen for ICE. Log in with the user that you've created in the setup script. Once you get past this screen and see the dashboard in your browser, you know that you successfully installed ICE. Congratulations!